Welcome to the next video in the evolution series. This video will be looking at evolution of Australian biota.8.5.35, describes some mechanisms found in Australian fauna to ensure fertilization and survival of the embryo and the young after birth. And 8.5.36 explain how the evolution of these reproductive adaptations has increased the chances of continuity of the species in the Australian environment. So let's have a look at some reproductive adaptations of Australian fauna. So Australia is the only continent where the mammal form fauna is almost exclusively marsupials. So we're the only um, continent where most of our mammals are actually pouched. So marsupials dominate the Australian scene because they are superbly adapted to survive the harsh and unpredictable climate. So we've already looked at um, internal and external fertilisation and how that has helped. So now we're going to have a look at how uh, different, uh, sorry, other adaptations have allowed these animals to overtake Australia. So one of the major aspects of their adaptation to the environment is the kangaroo's method of reproduction. Kangaroos and marsupials in general have a very short gestation period and the baby is bo born in a very underdeveloped state. So that means that the baby spends very little time in the womb before it is born and then it needs to grow quite a considerable amount while outside of the womb, which is why these organisms have these pouches. So under good conditions, when there is plenty of food, a marsupial can breed rapidly and increase the population more quickly. The development of a marsupial embryo can also be suspended, which is a process known as embryonic diapause, if times are tough. So if there's not enough food, there's not enough water, the temperature's too high, what the um, kangaroos can actually do is stop the embryo from growing in order to ensure that that embryo has a greater chance of survival. So under extreme conditions, it has been known for the lone female survivor from a kangaroo mob to raise her male joey who was in suspended animation for perhaps two years and then mate with him to re-establish the population. So as we know, humans can't do this and very few placental mammals, if, if any at all, would actually be able to reproduce with their own offspring. So some other mechanisms of Australian organisms to ensure that fertilisation occurs successfully. So firstly, in bow birds. So bow birds build an elaborate bower, which is sort of like, it's not a nest, but it's um, sort of like a gift to the female. They also dance and um, in an attempt to attract females. The bower is separate from the nest so that the male may mate with several females. So the bow birds are those that collect um, those shiny and blue objects and place them all in a little area and basically they're there to try to attract a female and then they mate with the female there the female goes back to their nest and then another female can come to the bower and the male could um, mate with her so the common dunna is a marsupial carnivorous or a carnivorous marsupial who is nocturnal and about the same size of a mouse it can breed between september and march and males are renowned for their ability to compete aggressively for the females. The female can have breeding cycles in this time and produce two litters of eight to ten young per year. The gestation time is only 12 days and time to wean is 60 days. So because of this very short gestation period, where they're able to produce um, offspring quite regularly um, and therefore have multiple litters per year. So the shortness of the breeding cycle helps to ensure fertilization, and the common dunna has been noted to quickly repopulate areas after bushfire. Uh, the spinifex hopping mouse. So an adaptation that these guys have developed is the male secretes a plug of mucus into the female's vagina after uh, fertilization, and this helps to ensure the fertilization so that the, um, the sperm isn't sort of lost, and it also prevents another male from mating. And lastly, kangaroos breed all year round, which also increases their chance of fertilisation. Competition between males ensures that the best genes are passed on. So the males will have basically fights within the mob in order to uh, ensure that only the strongest and fittest males are reproducing with the females. So some mechanisms to ensure the survival of the embryo and young after birth. So some species of frogs lay 
their eggs on land and these develop directly into into frogs by passing the tadpole stage so obviously reducing the chance of them being eaten by another organism in the australian marsupial frog the male frog carries the froglets in pockets on their hips and in the female gastric brooding frog like the one in the picture here they carry the tadpoles in their stomach so separate from um, obviously where they their food is digested but those young are then kept safe inside um, the frogs so that they're not attacked as well uh, so during prolonged droughts some female kangaroos stop breeding due to either delayed malnutrition or halting of their breeding cycle in red kangaroos the developing embryo in the uterus can lie dormant until conditions are again favorable many kangaroos mate shortly after giving birth but the embryo remains in the blastocyst stage in a process called embryonic diapause, which we mentioned earlier. So when the joey leaves the pouch, the developing embryo can uh, restart development, providing enough food is available. In good times, females can have a joey out of the pouch being weaned, one attached to the teat in the pouch and one in the uterus. The ability of the kangaroo to produce two types of milk through different teats also promotes the successful development of the young. The female kangaroo can also control the muscles around her pouch. So if danger arrives, she can ensure that the joey is not visible. Uh, the echidna does not lay eggs into a nest, but deposits them into an abdominal pouch. And when the young hatch, they are kept in the pouch for about seven weeks. And in the pouch, the young lick milk from the skin of the mother's stomach. And lastly, kookaburras and magpies are territorial. So they're different to our, the rest of that we sort of looked at are marsupials. So these are two bird species and they will display family behaviors to protect their eggs and their young. So we see this quite often during spring when people get attacked by flocks of magpies because they're simply trying to protect their offspring. So how has evolution occurred to allow these reproductive adaptations to take place? So natural selection occurs because there is variation between members of the same species. Species evolve over time because the environment constantly changes organisms, so challenges organisms and only the fittest survive. Those most suited to their environment have the best chance of survival and reproduction and therefore pass these characteristics on to their offspring. Embryonic diapause in kangaroos enables them to increase the population rapidly in good times. Prolonging gestation in bad times helps to conserve resources. The pouch enables a red kangaroo to travel the distances required for food and water in arid Australia and still care for their young. Recent fossil evidence suggests that some early placental mammals were in Australia at the time of the early marsupials. The reproductive methods of both marsupials and some early placentals clearly worked for these mammalian subclasses in the rapidly changing and drying out Australian environment. And that brings us to the end of this video. So thank you for watching.